Okay, Thanksgiving is upon us. And in typical Chef Seb's fashion, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. Instead of just roasting a whole bird, we're cooking turkey yakitori. You might be thinking, what is yakitori? Well, yakitori, quite simply, is a really kind of traditional way of grilling chicken. Each cut is grilled to perfection, so every single little bite is cooked perfectly. Yakitori is like quintessential textbook grilling. Grilling is super hot, super fast. It's not barbecue, which is low and slow. It's the total opposite of that. Normally in a yakitori bar, you'd get togarashi, which is like chilies and salt and sometimes sesame. I'm gonna show you how to make a Thanksgiving style one. So freaking good. Besides that, we've got a sauce. So as you're grilling, that's what's gonna give them like a little sticky char kind of crispiness to the outside. They're gonna be bomb. I'm gonna show you how to butcher. We're gonna make some yummy toppings and then we're going to grill. First things first, the butchery. For me, one of the things that's so great about butchering turkey yakitori style is to use the whole bird and you really get to honor every part. So this turkey is not just, you know, light and dark. I've got drum, I've got oyster, I've got thigh, I've got wing, I've got drumette, I've got skin, tender, breast, and my personal favorite, meatball. All those different bites, all those juicy flavors, all out of one turkey, we're gonna make like 50 plus skewers out of this one 12 pound bird. We're gonna break it into a couple few simple chapters. It's gonna go from one whole bird to breasts to hindquarters and a carcass. I'm gonna break those down and we're gonna go all the way to different skewers. Then we're gonna make meatball. Once you see me making meatballs, you know that's the end. Sharp knife, dry surface. Look at this bird, it's grippy. First things first, whole bird. So I'm not cutting meat yet, just slicing a little bit of skin. A little flipperoo. Here's the first cut we're going for here now, is the oyster, or as the French say, solules. Only a fool leaves behind. Good piece of meat. And that's one. That's one hindquarter. People uh, overstress how much cutting you're doing. You're actually just kind of doing a lot of like poking and snipping and tugging. So if you tug, you tend to end up with a little bit more material. See what I mean? Like I'm pulling and I'm getting all the skin right down to the bone. If I cut it, I'm gonna lose a bunch. Going down the keel bone here, and then you hit everyone's favorite, the wishbone. There's lots of ways you can fuss about it, but here's how I like to get rid of it. I like to put my knife right here in a little, that's it. Like even a Whole Foods, they'll break down your turkey for you. You could tell them you want two airline breasts, two hindquarters, and a carcass. So you can save yourself the time on this. Everything you're gonna skewer, you're gonna basically make it no wider than say one inch. You just want little bite-sized pieces. I like to trim so I don't have any dangly stuff on the skewers. And again, you're not wasting anything because it's gonna go in the meatball. Trust me, you're gonna have people who are like, give me the skin one. You want the skin, you bring the good wine. Usually it's some family member, they come over, they bring their like $6 bottle of wine and they drink all your good stuff. Who has the audacity to do that? Final chapter. Gotta reset, chill out a little bit. Look at all these skewers! Look, just because I want you to know at Chef's Steps we do our homework, you know? So when we link to like some skewer on Amazon, it's not because we're buddies with the skewer company. I don't know them. But it's because I tried their product and I like it. Kyle bought like every skewer we could find on Amazon. So stainless ones and then a bunch of wood ones. And check this out. I thought these ones were going to be golden, these big long stainless ones, but they're too fat and they're too dull. And I had to sharpen all of them on my bench grinder at home and that was annoying. And then they just get dull again. Turkey skin's a little bit tough at first and everything's so delicate when you try to put it through, you have a kind of a nightmare. It kind of destroys the small bites. Then I went and got the little simple round skewers, the bamboo ones. These are so dry and so like soft that they just kind of, they burn up really fast. Then the best I could find, and they're super cheap, this is what I settled on. These are my favorites. Bamboo skewers, they're rectangles. They don't roll around, so you can stabilize whatever you're cooking. I take these big fat skewers, put my knife right there, and I go 
right down the middle. And then I have two skewers that are like nice and square that way. It makes my life easier. I have the meat on ice because the firmer it is, the easier it is to cut, and that's no different than it is for the processor. I put the skin trim in first because that's chewy, 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 tough stuff. So that's gonna go in first, and I'm just gonna blitz it a few times to give it a head start. Like, it's chopped up. It's not pureed, it's chopped up. Okay, then the... Dang! This is where you bail because you don't want glass in your meatball. Kyle's working on million dollar cream of mushroom. That's your preview. I don't know which thing we're gonna publish first. But that 99 cent can of Campbell's is just like, I think it could be improved, you know? So Kyle went out and bought 500 pounds of white truffles to see if he could make a better can of cream of mushroom. It's definitely more expensive. <laughs> That's for sure. That's it. You've completed your turkey yakitori butchery journey. Now you just have like grade A premium bites. When you go to a yakitori joint, you get a couple little side sauces or spices. So this is our Thanksgiving togarashi. Delicious. What'd you put in it? Fresh thyme, chili flakes, lemon, and salt. So Kyle's got this awesome trick where he's just gonna take fresh thyme. You can do this with any herb, and he's gonna dry it in the microwave. We'll microwave both of these together until it gets fully dry, and then mash it all together with our fingers. Okay, well, I don't even know how to do this, so why don't you do it? I wanna see. Put the thyme on a plate, and then zest a whole lemon. I never thought to hold the lemon sideways. I always hold it lengthwise like and go, th I do, yeah, I do this. It doesn't matter, I like your style, but I just do this. And then I rotate. I've never seen that. I never seen the way you do it. Oh. You're the weirdo. We'll see. Somebody will comment. <laughs> we're just gonna put this right in the microwave. We're just drying it out though. The microwave's super great for this. If you were just to put the fresh zest in and the fresh thyme in, and then say put it in a jar, it could even go rotten on you. It could go like a little thyme would go black. The oils will start Yeah. To the oils get funky. We're gonna really squish everything together with the, the salt. One of my favorite things about the whole idea of the yakitori turkey is we're using the whole bird, every single bit. You can do old school pot on the stove, but I like pressure cookers. The reason why I think that they're the best is you can get like the least amount of water to the most amount of bone, and it cooks the fastest. I'm gonna add some peppercorns, I'm gonna add some sage, and then water, you just want enough water to cover it. We're gonna cook that down into a stock, reduce it, into a little glaze, then we're gonna even add a little bit more goodies. We're gonna add soy, we're gonna add orange, and we're gonna add cranberries. And we're gonna brush them with that. They're gonna be so freaking good. Now's the fun part, the grilling. So this is white oak, and they turn it into super dense charcoal. Listen, listen to this for a second. You know, like your little, Briquettes don't sound like that. You don't have to get binchotan. You can just use Kingsford or Mesquite, or you can just do wood coals, too. Let's play a game. Let's arrange all the turkey parts from most tender to most chewy. Who thinks, which, which one's the most tender? I'll ask you. Oyster. Oyster. I'm gonna go with eh. Yeah, let's call the tender. <laughs> so we've got tender, breast, meatball, oyster, thigh, drumette, skin, wing, drum. And to me, this is most tender to chewiest. And they'd probably cook about that rate too. This cooks the least. A little more, 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 a little more. I'm ready to grill and make some turkey tori Thanksgiving though. This is actually right outside the front door of Chef Step Studios. Right over here, that's our studio. It's got a sign. If you look at this, holy smokes, that's hot. That might be that might be too hot. That is, wow. It's like, it's like that scene when they try to fly the helicopter above Chernobyl. It's crazy. And the helicopter just falls apart in the air. I think that might happen here. I got my hot grill. I've got, so it's good for putting out fires. 
if it starts flaming up, and it's good for just flavor, you know? When these sticks start to burn, I squirt them too, pick it up, squirt the sticks. Okay, I'm gonna start grilling. You can fill the whole grill up. The risk you run though is you get more fat dripping, more moisture dripping, more flare ups, more fire, all that sort of stuff. That's beautiful. That's what you want. See how this is like isn't even cooked on the top, but it's like already getting charred and black. I love that. You got your breast here. Then you do a little bit of glaze, not first, but second. Because if you glaze too early, that sugar's just gonna burn. So the name of the game is kind of caramelize the meat a little bit, finish with the glaze. To me, this tender's like, it's done. I want to bring in some friends we've got from Olympia Provisions and from Eater. Yeah, what do you guys want to try here? Meatball. Meatball? I have a feeling I'm gonna like the skin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Skin's a big winner. So I'm gonna glaze, 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 glaze. I'm gonna put that side down for now. Try a little bit of everything, you know? Ooh, that's looking pretty. Can you flip these meatballs for me? See, you have guests, you make them cook. Well, thanks so much for coming, guys. I really love it. Thanks for bringing all the yummy snacks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. From a 12-pound bird, we actually made 52 individual skewers. I think that's a bargain. Yeah. In the beginning of this, I thought it would just be like, oh, a neat thing to do, to take turkey and make yakitori turkey. I'm never going back. There's so many yummy flavors and textures and bites here. And once you do that little bit of prep work, it's easy. You got your turkey, yakitori, Thanksgiving. I can't cuss now that we're like rebels, so I can just delicious. So there's a big difference between temperature and heat but you don't have to have a hibachi grill. I know I said sous vide was the best way to cook a turkey a couple years ago, and it was at the time, because that's all I could think about. Mm -hmm.